people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent three-day visit to the United States marked a significant milestone in the evolving India-US relationship. By participating in the Quad Leaders Summit and delivering a keynote address at the United Nations, PM Modi highlighted the importance of international cooperation and shared democratic values. He also engaged with industry leaders across various sectors who expressed strong confidence in India's potential as a global economic powerhouse. Take a look. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently returned to New Delhi after a productive three-day visit to the United States, a trip marked by significant diplomatic engagement and strategic discussions. During his time in the US, PM Modi focused on strengthening international ties and addressing pressing global challenges. His schedule was packed with bilateral meetings where he met with various world leaders to explore opportunities for collaboration. Friends. During his trip, PM Modi participated in the Quad Leaders Summit in Delaware and delivered a keynote speech at the United Nations Summit of the Future. At the high-level summit, PM Modi emphasized India's unwavering commitment to fostering global unity and cooperation. Bharat ke liye one earth, one family, one future ek commitment hai. Yehi commitment hamare one earth, one health, or one sun. One world, one grid, जैसे initiatives में भी दिखाई देता है। पूरी मानवता के हितों की रक्षा और वैश्विक समृद्धि के लिए भारत मानसा, वाचा, कर्मणा से काम करता रहेगा। Emphasizing shared democratic values and strong people-to-people -people connections, PM Modi and US President Joe Biden explored avenues for enhancing cooperation across various sectors. They exchanged insights on pressing global and regional issues including the Indo-Pacific region and expressed confidence in the enduring strength and resilience of their relationship, highlighting its importance for collaborative progress between the two nations. As part of his engagements, PM Modi also met a host of industry leaders ranging from semiconductors to electronics to biotechnology, where they discuss the potential and opportunities India has to offer. The industry leaders conveyed their optimism regarding India's transition and emphasized the critical role that digital innovative technologies could play in this transformation. We had a a wonderful meeting with Prime Minister Modi uh, to exchange ideas about the advancement of technology, uh, the use of AI and biotechnology, and the growth of India as an emerging uh, superpower economically. Um, we have uh, uh, already a large research-based uh, center in India. We plan to grow that. The enthusiasm shown by these industry leaders underscores their increasing confidence in India's potential as a global economic powerhouse, especially in light of the strengthening India-US relationship. Their investment strategies indicate a strong belief in India's capacity to excel in research and development, further cementing its strategic role in the global market. The India-US relationship is becoming increasingly robust and expansive in various dimensions. This relationship is becoming more dynamic, 
with both nations recognizing the importance of working together to tackle the shared challenges and seize new opportunities. At the 21st Indo-US Economic Summit in New Delhi, the Deputy Chief of the US Embassy articulated a vision for partnership that emphasizes sustainable trade opportunities, job creation and shared prosperity, all while prioritizing environmental health. We have to be joint stewards of the well-being of our citizens, of uh, the health of our planet, uh, and really make sure that we are creating opportunities and jobs and prosperity um, in a way that is sustainable and, and that will take care of the planet as, as well. So um, this partnership, I think, grows deeper because we recognize that shared responsibility. With a shared commitment to addressing global challenges and promoting prosperity, the collaboration between India and the US stands poised to thrive, fostering a more resilient and interconnected global economy. As this relationship evolves, it not only benefits the two nations, but also contributes to stability and growth on a global scale. Moving on, India and Bangladesh are entering a fresh chapter of dialogue following significant political changes in Bangladesh. With the ousting of former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party has indicated a thaw in relations, asserting that the ice has started to melt. Recent high-level meetings including Indian External Affairs Minister S. Deshankar's discussions with Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Advisor Tohid Hussain underscore India's commitment to enhancing cooperation. A report. India and Bangladesh are entering a new phase in their relationship marked by renewed dialogue. This comes at a time of heightened tensions in the region. Following the ousting of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the formation of an interim government, one of the largest political parties in Bangladesh, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party BNP is signalling a thaw in ties, claiming that the ice has started to melt with India. The Bangladesh Nationalist Party has expressed optimism about its relationship with India. Historically critical of various agreements with India, during Hasina's 15-year tenure, the BNP now, led by Begum Khalida Zia, has expressed optimism about rebuilding relations in light of recent political developments. This renewed dialogue comes after significant student-led clashes that contributed to the political upheaval. In a crucial step towards strengthening bilateral relations, Indian Higher Commissioner in Dhaka, Pranay Verma, recently met with BNP Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alimgir at the BNP office. Their discussions focused on strengthening mutual concerns and fostering cooperation between the two nations. The relationship uh, was in question at, at, for, uh, because of the last election. But this time, this uh, visit of the uh, High Commissioner in our office has definitely has improved the situation. At the same time, in the India's main uh, issue was the uh, security problem and uh, we have ens ensured that, that uh, we will ensure that uh, this land will not be, if we are in power, this land will not be used uh, by the citizens. Amid the development, the desire of certain Bangladeshi political parties, including the BNP, for Sheikh Hasina to return from India underscores a growing unease about India's influence in Bangladesh. The BNP and other parties are looking to leverage this sentiment to galvanize support for their cause. By highlighting concerns over Hasina's alignment with India, they aim to position themselves as defenders of national sovereignty and interests. We haven't as yet uh, I think the government has not as yet uh, made it official uh, request to India to to send in Bangladesh back. But uh, I think that should be a, a problem because 
the, 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 the former Prime Minister uh, should come back to face the uh, allegations brought against her and she should be accountable. Despite existing challenges, India is proactively working to enhance relations with the new Bangladeshi government. Recent high-level meetings have highlighted the evolving dynamics between the two nations. Indian External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar recently met with Bangladesh's Foreign Affairs Advisor Dohit Hussain to discuss bilateral relations. This significant meeting took place on the sidelines of the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly and marked Jay Shankar's first engagement with Bangladeshi counterpart since the interim government, led by Muhammad Yunus Khan, took power on August 8. These discussions reflect India's commitment to rebuilding trust and cooperation, emphasizing a collaborative approach to address mutual concerns and strengthen ties in various sectors, including trade, security and cultural exchange. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Myanmar's ruling military urged its armed opponents through a statement announced by the military-run state media to abandon what it called terrorism and join the political fold in a general election next year in an unexpected outreach to its enemies that was quickly rebuffed. Myanmar is locked in a civil war with the junta fighting on multiple fronts against an armed resistance movement, the People's Defence Forces, which are loosely allied with several ethnic minority rebel groups with a bitter history with the military. The offer was the military's first olive branch to its rivals since its 2021 coup, having resisted international calls to enter into dialogue and what it insists are terrorists determined to destroy the country. South Korean lawmakers passed a bill that criminalizes possessing or watching sexually explicit deep fake images and videos with penalties set to include prison terms and fines. There has been an outcry in South Korea over Telegram group chats where sexually explicit and illegal deep fakes are created and widely shared, prompting calls for tougher punishment. Currently, making sexually explicit deep fakes with the intention of distributing them is punishable by five years in prison or a fine of 50 million won under the Sexual Violence Prevention and Victims Protection Act. A delegation of foreign diplomats from at least 15 countries including the United States, Singapore and South Korea visited India's Jammu and Kashmir to witness the second phase of polls on September 25th. The senior diplomats said they were happy to witness citizens exercising their democratic right to vote in the Indian Union territory and drew comparisons to their own country's electoral systems. Voting in the second phase was held across 26 electoral constituencies, including Srinagar. The World's Hindi Congress held a significant protest at the UNHRC in Geneva to shed light on severe human rights violations by Pakistan against the Sindhi people. Joined by representatives from Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and human rights advocates from various countries, the assembly highlighted issues such as enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and the suppression of the Sindhi voice. Speakers urgently called for international intervention, demanding a halt to land grabs and a comprehensive investigation into these atrocities. Take a look. The World Sindhi Congress organized a large protest against Pakistan in front of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva during its 57th session. Sindhi representatives exiled leaders from Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and human rights defenders from Bangladesh and various European countries joined the protest. 
The protest aimed to inform the UN and the international community about the ongoing human rights violations inflicted upon the Sindhi people by the Pakistani state. Speakers reiterated that the Sindhi, Baloch, Pashtun and Kashmiri people are systematically oppressed by Pakistan, citing numerous instances of heinous crimes. आज हमने यूनाइटेड नेशंस के आगे ये जो मुजाहरा किया है उसका मकसद ये है कि जो हमारे खिलाफ जुल्म हो रहा है बर्बरत हो रही है जबर हो रहा है ज्यातियां हो रही हैं उनके खिलाफ हमने एहतजाज किया एक हमारा जो ह्यूमन राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट था वो जो क्रिटिकल था शानवास डॉक्टर शानवास कुंबर उसको उन्होंने ब्लास्फेमी के तहत जो है चार्ज किया उसके बाद उसको अरेस्ट किया और इनकाउंटर दिखाकर पुलिस ने उसको कत्ल कर दिया उसके कत्ल के बाद जो है जो उसकी बाटी है वो उन मुलाओं ने उन उनके रिश्तेदारों से छीन कर उसको जलाने की कोशिश की ना सिर्फ ये बल्कि वो मुला जो है वो पुलिस पार्टी के पास गए और उनको हार पहनाए फूल दिए ना सिर्फ मुलाओं ने बल्कि वहाँ की जो लोकल एम एन ए हैं इमदाद शाह वो भी इस जुर्म में बराबर का शरीक हुआ डब्ल्यू एस सी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एम्फोसाइज दैट दी सिचुएशन इन सिंध इज वर्सनिंग डे बाई डे पाकिस्तान दी मेन कंसर्न रेस्ट इंक्लूडेड enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings of sindhi political activists the ethnic cleansing of sindhi hindus colonial style land grabs by the pakistan army and their associates large scale theft of river indus waters by punjab and the suppression of the sindhi voice regarding historical political and human rights don't take water even for drinking we are holding this protest today on behalf of world sindhi congress to tell the un and to tell the international community and about the crimes the crimes against humanity the human rights crimes that pakistan is committing in sindh as as well as our fellow brother nations in balochistan baloch nation again pashtun nation they are literally taking everything that we have they are destroying our motherland they are destroying our people they are destroying our culture they are destroying our harmony and we need the un and the international community to intervene to save us speakers resolutely pointed out that these human rights atrocities occur with utter impunity leaving victims with no path to justice In light of these appalling violations an earnest plea was made to the UN and the international community to intervene and establish a fact finding mission to investigate the human rights atrocities and take urgent and effective action to protect the Sindhi nation from further suffering Let's now talk about Sri Lanka which has entered a new era with the election of Anura Kumara Desanayake as president marking a significant shift from the past. The 55 year old Marxist politician focused on clean governance and economic revival during his inauguration. With a 75% vote turnout, this election is crucial following the country's 2022 economic collapse. This Anayake's appointment of Harini Amarasuraya as prime minister signals a commitment to innovative leadership. as the nation faces economic challenges observers are closely monitoring how this administration will turn promises into effective reforms for sustainable growth a report in a significant turn of events for sri lanka anura kumara desanayake a 55 year old marxist leaning politician without any political heritage took office as the country's new president His win in the presidential election represented a pivotal moment for the debt-ridden nation, outpacing prominent figures such as incumbent president Ranil Wickremesinghe and opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. 
In his inauguration speech, Disanaye ke promised to champion clean politics and breathe new life into Sri Lanka's struggling economy, signaling a hopeful new chapter for the country as it grapples with significant challenges. राज्यों <laughs> अपिलोकिन हुदकला बावट पत्ती तो राज्य अपने भी लोक ऐतिहासिक साहमिक एकाबद्ध इधर टे आयु तो राज्य ये पिले बंद आवश्यक है तीन दूसरी नगर ना पिकी सेत ना पैकेली नहीं नहीं है। The election saw a robust turnout, with approximately 75% of the 17 million eligible voters casting their ballots. The election was particularly significant as it was the first since the Sri Lankan economy plummeted in 2022 due to severe foreign exchange shortage which crippled the country's ability to import essential goods such as fuel, medicine and cooking gas. The resulting protests forced the resignation of the then president Gotabaya Rajapaksa underscoring the urgent need for effective governance. This Anaike's accession to power comes at a pivotal moment for Sri Lanka, which is striving to recover from years of economic mismanagement and external pressures. The European Union Selection Observer Mission, led by Chief Observer, acknowledged the professionalism of the electoral process but expressed concerns regarding a curfew imposed on election night signaling ongoing tensions around governance in the nation I'm very happy to say probably this is of my long list of mission the mission with which I had the opportunity to utter the commitment and the and the capacity and the, and the, and the excellent uh, results of the work of the election commission in, in many ways uh, very transparent, very efficient, very professional, trusted. Not one single of my interlocutors, I probably the rest of the team, has never cast a minor doubt about the attitude of the election commission. And to enjoy this trust is, is, is really an asset that you have to, that you have to, to enjoy it and, and to keep it and, and to take care of. The same day, the same day in which a state institution as the election commission said this has been the most peaceful electoral campaign and electoral process in our history the same day there was a curfew and this is not matching in another key development sri lanka's new president named harini amarasuraya a college professor and first time lawmaker as the new prime minister of the Indian Ocean Island nation on September 24th as the Sanaike and Amra Suraya embark on this journey the future of Sri Lanka hangs in the balance so he'll be taking a very pragmatic approach at least for the next couple of months how things play out in 2025 and beyond is to be seen but i think at the most immediate he is going to take a very practical approach the new administration's commitment to transparency international collaboration and economic revitalization will be pivotal in navigating the nation through its ongoing challenges observers will be watching closely to see how these leaders turn promises into actionable policies that can lead sri lanka towards sustainable growth and stability Sri Lanka begins a new journey with high hopes for lasting change and with that we come to the end of this week's episode see you next week goodbye and take care
people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.